हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू ई पी जी पाठशाला आई एम मोनिका सैनी फ्रॉम डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ एंथ्रोपोलॉजी यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ डेली टूडे आई एम गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट द मॉड्यूल आइडेंटिफिकेशन थ्रू मैनरिज डिफॉर्मिटीज स्कॉस ऑक्यूपेशनल मार्क्स हैंड राइटिंग एज सेक्स एंड एथनिक एसोसिएशन अंडर द पेपर ऑफ forensic anthropology in this module you will learn about the personal identification need of identification and different methods of identification which include race age sex deformities scar occupational marks handwriting and mannerism identification is the establishment or determination of the individuality of a person in this process the characteristics by which one person is distinguished from others are determined identification may be complete or partial complete identification is the absolute fixation of the identity of a person whereas partial identification refers to the ascertainment of only some facts about the identity which also helps or assist in the complete identification in medical legal cases identification is important in living or as well as in dead in living persons identification is required in civil and criminal cases civil cases include impersonation or false personation which include disputed identity in case of divorce or nullity of marriage disputed sex missing persons and lost memory patients whereas criminal cases include assault murder decoity sexual offences absconding soldiers criminal abortions and to fix up the age of criminal responsibility and majority in case of dead person again identification is required in the cases of natural mass disasters like earthquakes tsunamis landslides floods or it can be natural mass disasters and in case of man made disasters like bomb explosions fire air crash building collapse railway accidents or bodies recovered from the sea rivers canals wells and in cases when the body is highly decomposed or dismembered to deliberately conceal the identity of the individual the establishment of identity is based on the number of data or requirements which include race sex age complexion and features hair anthropometry and dactylography footprints deformities scars tattoo marks occupational marks hand writing clothes and personal articles speech and voice gait tricks of manners and habit mental power memory and education and the last is miscellaneous methods of identification race or ethnicity is a primary source of identification the question of the determination of the race is common issue in personal identification the identification of races is required in the cases of unknown or unclaimed dead bodies found in railway carriage lying in the streets roads fields and recovered from the wells tanks canals and rivers the primary races that is caucasoid mongoloid and negroid 
can be recognized from certain differences in skull, forehead, face, orbit, that is the cavity or the socket of the skull in which the eye and its appendages are situated. The other characteristics on which the racial identification is made include the upper extremities, lower extremities, hair, skin color and iris color. The presented diagram is showing you the craniofacial differences among caucasoid, mingoloid and negroid. Here you can see in the case of caucasoid, the skull is rounded, the forehead is raised, the orbits are triangular and hairs are reddish in color whereas the skin color is blue or gray. In case of mongoloid, the skull is square, forehead is inclined, the orbits are small, hairs are wavy, the skin color is yellowish. Whereas in case of negroid, the skull is narrow and elongated, forehead is small, the orbits are in squarish in shape, hairs are thick, black, curly and the skin color is black. These races can also be estimated on the basis of a number of indices which include brachial index that is the ratio of humeral index, crural index, it is the ratio of tibiofemoral index, intermembral index, humerofemoral index and cephalic index which is the ratio of the maximum breadth of the skull to the maximum length of the skull multiplied by 100. In addition to the racial identification, the religious association can also be identified on the basis of the different features which include different type of ornamentation and dressing patterns. For example, Hindu males, they are not circumcised and they wear sacred thread over left shoulder in high caste or dvizas. They also wear necklace of wooden beads and they put caste marks on the forehead and they also have tuft of hair on the back of head and wear different kinds of lobes in their ears. Whereas in case of Muslim males, they are circumcised and they have different kind of callosities on the lateral aspect of their knees and feet due to their postures when they offer their prayers. In case of Hindu females, they put vermilion on the head and they wear silver toe ornaments and nose ring apertures in the left nostrils and few openings for earrings along helix. Whereas Muslim females, they do not put any kind of vermilion and they, put, uh, they wear nose ring in the septum and to hide their faces, they put well. This image is showing you the demarcation of Hindu and Muslim female on the basis of their external appearance. These images are showing you the differentiation in the Hindu and Muslim males on the basis of their different caste marks and callosities on the foot in case of Muslim males. The next characteristic which is used for identification is sex. Sex determination is important in many cases related to their hairship that is the right to inherit property, disposal of property, marriage, education, importance, rape, divorce and allied subjects. 
sex can be easily determined on the basis of general physical or morphological features which includes general build scalp hair eyebrow hair facial hair pubic hair shoulder waist breast uterus the presence of penis and the presence of ovaries and scrotum sex of a person can also be identified on the basis of skeleton accuracy of sex determination according to the cro-magnon is 100% in case of entire skeleton it is 95% in case of pelvis 98% in skull and it is 80% in case of long bones when sex is identified from skull a number of features are taken into consideration and these features include general appearance of the skull capacity of the skull frontal surface supra orbital ridges that is the conical prominence projecting from the back part of the temporal bone the other features include nestoid process orbits forehead mandibular ramus foramen magnum teeth palate chin jaw line and glabella that is the area between the eyebrows just above the nose the presented diagram is showing you the sex identification on the basis of skulls here you can see in case of male skulls the canines are large chin is square the muscle attachments are pronounced and the supra orbital ridges are extreme and the overall skull is robust in case of males whereas in case of females the supra orbital ridges are slight the orbital border is sharp and the chin is rounded sex of a person can be determined on the basis of differences in the various pelvic traits the pelvic girdle is the most sexually dimorphic region of the skeleton and sex can be determined with this with high accuracy the pelvic features which are used for sexual estimation include pubic symphysis pubic bone subpubic angle that is the angle formed below the pubic symphysis acetabulum greater sciatic notch sacrum that is the triangular bone made up of five fused vertebrae from the posterior section of pelvis the other features which are helpful in sex estimation include pelvic inlet ilium coccyx peri auricular and post auricular spaces the diagram is showing you the sex identification on the basis of the shape of the pelvis as you can see in the diagram in case of the female pelvis the subpubic angle is more than 90 degree whereas in case of male the subpubic angle is less than 90 degree the sacrum is tilted towards the back side in case of females whereas in case of males the sacrum is tilted forward in case of females the pelvic outlet is big with the spread spreaded ilia whereas in case of males the pelvic outlet is small and ilias are closer together in addition to the skull and pelvis sex can also be estimated with different characteristics of femur sternum that is the flat bone at the front center of the chest and scapula that is the bone that connects the humerus with the clavicle and vertebral column these characteristic features of femur include head of the femur 
neck shaft angle, bicondylar width, popliteal length, general appearance, and sternal index. Whereas the characteristic of scapula, which help in sex identification, are the height of scapula and the glenoid activity. And in case of vertebral columns, these features are total length of the spinal column and breadth of the atlas vertebra. Sex of a person can also be determined in adults by examining the presence of testicles with the emission of fluids containing sperms which is a strong evidence of a male whereas the presence of ovaries with periodical bleeding from an opening in genitals it indicates the strong evidences of a female in the absence of above characteristics the presence of a uterus or a second opening in the front of leading to the bladder indicates a female microscopic demonstration of ovarian testicular or prostatic tissues it can also be used for the sex determination the prostatic tissue can occur in females also but the amount and the position varies the presence of sex chromatin that is the bar bodies in the tissue cells can also be used for sex identification in 1949 bar and bertram observed that the nucleus of the nerve cells contained a nuclear satellite in females this was later defined as sex chromatin or bar bodies sex chromatin can also be demonstrated in various other cells that is the cells of the skin buccal mucosa cartilage amniotic fluid polymorphous and lymphocytes a fusion reaction is the be best staining technique for demonstration of these bar bodies through the hemotoxylyson method it can also be used for sex determination disputed sexual identity cases gonadal biopsy is the confirmatory method of determining sex in all the disputed sexual identity cases when in case of concealed sex when criminals try to conceal their sexual identity by wearing costumes of opposite sex and in case of intersex states where which is the state of intermingling of sexual characters of either sex in one individual to a varying degree gonadal biopsy is the confirmatory method of determining sex the intersex states these can be divided into four stages gonadal agenesis gonadal diagenesis true hermaphroditism and pseudo hermaphroditism here you can see an example of gonadal diagenesis where external sexual organs are present but they fail to develop during puberty in the first image you can see an example of klinefelter syndrome these patients are anatomically male but the chromosomal sex is predominantly female in this second diagram there is an example of turner syndrome where these are anatomically female but the gonads are undifferentiated streaks of fibrous tissue now i will talk about the age which is the primary characteristic of identification the age of an individual can be determined from the teeth skeleton ossification of bones height and weight and some minor signs age of a person can be estimated from the teeth with x rays by noting the number and position of teeth the presence of any peculiarities 
like decay, malposition, overlapping or mal rotation, fillings, gaps or dentures help in the identification of the age. Every individual has two sets of teeth in his or her lifetime that is deciduous or temporary teeth and permanent teeth. The deciduous teeth are 20 in number that is 4 incisors, 2 canines and 4 molars in each jaw whereas the permanent teeth are 32 in number which is 4 incisors, 2 canines, 4 premolars and 6 molars in each jaw. The age of a person can be determined on the basis of differences in the features of deciduous and permanent teeth and these features include size, position, neck, crown color, presence of the ridges and temporary molars and bicuspids. The next criteria which is used for age determination is skeletal segments which includes skull sutures, sternum and sacrum. The closure of the suture occurs at different time periods in the Lifetime of an individual. These sutures are fontanelle suture, metopic sutures, fusion of the bossy occiput and bossy sphenoid suture, and anterior one third of the sagittal and lower half of the coronal and lambdoid suture. Simultaneously, sternum also plays an important role in the estimation of age because of the appearance and fusion of the various components at various age range. Here you can see in this table, the manubrium fused in the old age, usually above the 50 years with the body. And the different segments of the body, that is first segment, second, third and the fourth segment, they fuse from the 14 to the 25 years from below to upwards whereas the xiphoid process it starts fusing around 40 to 45 years with the body. Another skeletal segment is sacrum which is used for age determination. The five sacral vertebrae remain separated by cartilage until puberty. With the onset of the puberty, ossification and the intervertebral disc starts from below upwards and the fusion of the sacral segments become completed by 20 to 25 years. The next sign which is useful in the determination of age is ossification of bones. Ossification is the process of creating bones that is of transforming cartilage into bone. The adult human has 206 bones at 11th to 12th week of intrauterine life. There are 806 centers of ossification and around 450 at the time of birth. This table is showing you the different changes in the symphysal surfaces that occur with the age. The symphysal surface is the articulation in which the bones are united by cartilage without a synovial membrane. The symphysial surface has an even appearance with a layer of compact bone over its surface at the age of below 20 years, whereas this articular surface looks smooth and oval with raised upper and lower extremities between 35 to 45 years. The symphysial surface presents varying degree of erosion with breaking down of the ventral markings in the age of above 50 years. Here this image is depicting the process of ossification. This process is divided into five steps. The first step is the formation of the 
bone collar around the hyaline cartilage model the next step is the cavitation of the hyaline cartilage within the cartilage model the third step is the invasion of the internal cavities by the periosteal bud and spongy bone formation in the fourth step there is a formation of the medullary cavity as the ossification continues and in the final step ossification of the epiphysis occurs the height and weight of an individual are another important parameters of the age determination the height and weight of an individual increases progressively with age these are affected due to malnutrition and senile degeneration it is not considered as a reliable source to determine the age in medico legal cases some minor signs are also considered as an important indicators of the age of a person these minor signs include secondary sexual characteristics and baldness or graying of the hairs some minor signs are also considered as an important indicators of the age in the males the secondary sexual characteristics are at the age of 14 years the fine hairs begin to appear on the pubis testes become larger and firmer and penis enlarges and voice becomes hoarse whereas in case of females during puberty breasts begin to develop some fine pale and downy hair appear on the monopubis and the menstruation starts there are many cases in which a medical person is called upon to give his opinion regarding age these cases include criminal responsibility marriage contract kidnapping rape attainment of majority employment judicial punishment infanticides and criminal abortion the deformities are the another excellent means of personal identification the deformities are classified into two types congenital and acquired deformities the congenital deformities they are present by birth such as cleft palate hair lip supernumerary fingers or polydactyly supplementary memory web fingers or toes kyphosis mongolian spots and moles these type of deformities are hereditary in nature and known to occur through successive generations in the same family whereas the acquired deformities are acquired after birth of an individual these deformities include polymyelitis old amputations mal united and non united fractures of the bones of extremities which are the result of previous injuries here the images are showing you the examples of congenital deformities in the first image you can see the polydactyly where the each hand of the human is consisting of six fingers the second image of cleft palate which is an acute example of congenital deformity here we have the examples of acquired deformities in the first image you can see the mal union and non union of the fractures whereas in the second example is the amputation of leg the next source of personal identification is scar a scar or cicatrix is a fibrous tissue covered by the epithelium formed as a result of the healing process of a wound or injury in which there has been a breach of continuity of 
substance. A scar has no hair follicle, pigment, sweat glands, but it is slightly vascular owing to the presence of a few capillaries. The examination of a scar, it should be done under proper lighting. The things which should be noted when scars are examined include the size, shape, color, number, location on the body, smoothness or irregularity of the surface, presence or absence of the glistering or tenderness in the scar. The conditions of the end, whether it is tapering or it is not tapering, and the probable direction of the original wound may also be determined. The application of heat, filtered UV light, or surface friction make faint scars more visible. A magnifying glass is also useful for the examination of a scar. Suspected scars in the dead body can be proved by the presence or the absence of elastic tissue which is absent in a scar. A scar generally assumes the shape of the wound causing it. A scar resulting from an incised wound which has healed by first intention is usually linear or straight. The lacerated wounds result in the broad and irregular scars, whereas the vaccination scars are circular, oval, flat or slightly depressed. The scar causing permanent disfiguration of the head or the face amounts to the grievous hurts. Scar at the cubital fossa or dorsum of the hand may indicate drug addiction. The exact age of the scar varies according to the size, nature and position of the wound, the presence or absence of the sepsis, the method of healing and the vascularity of the part. The age of scar is important in ascertaining the time elapsed since infliction or sustaining of injury in assault. An uninfected superficial cut usually heals with the formation of a scar by fifth to sixth day, whereas freshly formed scars, they appear reddish or bluish but is tender and soft. With age, the scar contracts but it remains little tender and soft. The age is between 2 to 6 months. As the scar further contracts, it becomes tough, white and glistening. The age is probably not less than 6 months to an indefinite number of years. The superficial linear scars which involve epidermis disappear in a few years. Scars resulting from wound or skin disease which involve whole thickness of the skin are permanent. Whereas a scar may be removed by surgery and its shape and size may also be altered by surgical operations. Tattooing or infliction of the incision on the scarred area to efface it is sometimes practiced. Here, these images are showing you the different type of scars. In the first image, you can see the linear scar, whereas in the second image, you can see the scar made after a surgery. The next type of data is occupation marks, which is used as an important source of identification. Certain occupation or traits leave impressions on the body of the persons. These impressions or marks help in the identification of the living individuals or dead bodies. These marks are of two types. The two types of occupational marks are 
temporary or permanent marks the temporary marks include marks at their fingerprints in case of paints dyes chemicals or grease microscopic examination of dust or debris under the nail beds or in the clothes and in the ear wax and nostrils also help in the identification of an individual it also reflects the presence of a person at a particular place whereas the permanent marks include callosities on the outer side of the distal phalanx of the middle finger of a clerk thickening of the palmar skin in butchers horny and rough hands in manual laborers here in this table different type of occupational marks are given in case of coil miners multiple blue scars are present which are caused by the dust entering on the hands and face producing minute lacerations in case of clerk callosities on the outer side of the distal phalanx of the right hand is seen in case of violinist there is a hardening of tip of the finger of the left hand whereas in case of manual laborers there is a horny and rough hands these images are depicting you the different examples of occupational marks in the first image the hands of a coil miner is shown whereas in the second image the knuckle pads in the leather buffer laborers are shown handwriting is the next source of personal identification handwriting is unique characteristic of an individual which helps in identification a person's handwriting is a combination of two characteristics class characteristics and individual characteristics class characteristics of handwriting are shared by the handwritings of a group of a person for example handwriting of doctors whereas the individual characteristics are peculiar of one's handwriting system and majorly helps in individual identification the identification of handwriting is a scientific process that includes the examination of various aspects of handwriting including the writer's slant margin size of the letters beginning and ending stroke speed and flow of handwriting and particular letter formations there are different factors which influence the handwriting these factors include age gender education level occupation type mood position of the pen and paper nationality ethnicity graphic maturity cognition which is the ability of a person to learn anything the handwriting is also influenced by the heredity rheumatic disease of the joints of hands or different kind of psychological disorders this illustration is representing the comparison of handwriting samples by using different features of handwriting such as baseline alignment connecting strokes height relationship and structural differences the next source of identification is mannerism mannerism is a habitual or particular mode or way of doing an act it is also defined as marked or excessive adherence to an unusual or a particular manner these are individualistic of an individual the examples of mannerism include repetitive jerky movements of the shoulder or the muscles of the face or left handedness 
these images are showing you different examples of mannerism in the first image the unique style of shahrukh khan is shown whereas in second image the left handedness of barack obama is shown as an example of mannerism so students let us summarize what we have studied in this module the identification is the determination of an individuality of a person it deals with the recognition and verification of a person this identification process is done in living or dead persons by recognizing or identifying certain features or characteristics that are unique to that person identification also has certain medical legal importance in civil or criminal cases there are a number of sources by which a person may be identified which include race age sex stature complexion hair fingerprints footprints anthropometry personal effects deformities scar handwriting and mannerism sex age and stature are primary characteristics of personal identification whereas personal effects handprints and footprints deformities scar handwriting and mannerism comes under secondary characteristics which helps in the complete identification of an individual thank you